to this um, special select board meeting. I will call this meeting to order for the town of Morristown. This hearing is a hybrid meeting, and there are participants meeting both in person and online. So before I begin, I have a couple of just brief general announcements. Anyone wishing to speak? Can you speak more than I sure can. Anyone wishing to speak in person must come over to the microphone over here to my right. Participants on Zoom should click on the raise their hand button if they wish to speak and mute their microphone when not speaking. Do we have anybody on there right now, Judy? Two. Yeah. Two people. Okay. Yeah. Online participants, um, I already read that. All participants must state their full name before addressing the assembly. All questions and remarks must, must be addressed to the chair. Your speeches must be confined to the merits of the item. In-person participants will be allowed to speak first, then Zoom participants. All participants will be allowed to speak twice on a given item for a maximum duration of two minutes each time. After you've spoken once on a particular item, you will not be recognized a second time during discussion on that item until all other voters who wish to speak on the issue for the first time are given an opportunity to do so. Now, just before we get going, I actually have following the agenda. Any changes or additions? No. Okay. So just before we get going, uh, I think we've all hopefully received ballots for the statewide election. And I just want to take advantage of this moment and remind people that you will be getting a second ballot in the mail next week. So there will be two ballots out there to mail, or to uh, vote and to, if you choose to, however you choose to drop them off the town clerk's office, that's up to you. Um, I have talked to the town clerk's office and I believe the town clerk had something in front of the forum yesterday, and you should be receiving your ballot before October 16th. Okay. So I just want to make sure that that's, uh, that's clear. So moving on, new business. We have three articles to discuss. The first article is uh, the article concerning the charter, and I thought it would be wise if I read that We've had a couple of public hearings regarding the charter, and um, I'll just read what is proposed in the charter. Section 1, Corporate Existence Retained. The inhabitants of the town of Morristown within the corporate limits now established shall continue to be a municipal corporation by the name of the town of Morristown. Section 2, General Law Application. Except when changed or modified by this charter, or by any lawful regulation or ordinance of the town of Morristown, all the statutes of the state relating to municipalities shall apply to the town of Morristown. 3. Section 3. Town Manager. A. The town manager shall be the chief executive officer and the head of the administrative branch of the town government, and shall be responsible to the select board for the efficient administration of the municipal affairs of the town. B. The town manager shall have authority to hire, appoint, discipline, and remove all town employees subject to the provisions of personnel rules approved by the select board. The town manager may authorize the department head to hire, appoint, discipline, or remove an employee subject to the manager's discretion and supervision. So that is what's proposed. That is what the voters of Morristown will vote upon for Article 1. So I would, uh, like I said, we've had two public hearings up till now. Um, I would say I think the board would agree. We haven't had a lot of input on this, but now is a good time. If there is any input, any questions, concerns, thoughts, anybody would want to address. And if you do, please raise your hand online or come on up to the microphone and identify yourself. Anything online? No. Okay. Okay, seeing nothing, I am going to move on to number two. Discuss the special town meeting article two for November 5th. Judy, would you mind putting that white slide up for article two? I think it's uh, when you get a chance. I'll read the article 
but uh, I'm hoping in your packet it looks like you have this. There's a flow chart in your packet, which should be really helpful. I, I, I fear to apologize for the legalese, but we, we have had a, a you know, significant legal input and advice in, in writing this article to make sure that it is correct. But I do think the flow chart nicely spells out for us lay people what this really means. But the article says, shall the voters pursuant to 24 BSA section 3254 levy a special assessment not to exceed $200,000 for the purpose of constructing stormwater improvements to benefit 64 parcels. 63 parcels having frontages on Foss Street, Jersey Court, Jersey Way, and Sterling Court, and one parcel with frontage on Court Cottage Street. Said 64 parcels being designated as the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District, with said special assessment being apportioned among those 64 parcels based on the impervious surface present on each parcel and the assessment being payable over a period not to exceed 20 years in semi-annual installments. Now I'm going to just go through that flowchart as well. Gives us all a chance to think about this a little bit. Um, so Article 2, if it is passed, that would mean then two things. Jersey Heights, Special Assessment District would be responsible for 66% of the stormwater improvements that the town would have to pay for. The town of Morristown would be responsible for 34%. And just to explain that, it's because the town currently is responsible for 34% of the uh, impervious services in that area. If this article fails, then the town of Morristown is responsible for 100%. Now, just so we have a few numbers to play with here, and I'm looking at a lot of individuals that have been to the meetings prior to tonight. You've heard these numbers before. Um, our engineer put together, or there was an initial cost estimate of $439,000 for the stormwater improvements. $439,000. We have been awarded, the town's been awarded $316,675 as part of a grant. Can, can you repeat that last sentence, please? Sure. The town of Morristown has been awarded a grant in the amount of $316,675. Leaving a difference of approximately $120,000. So that's what we're talking about here, is $120,000. And um, this is, the, again, because of the three acre rule, the three acre impervious surface rule that the state of Vermont, the legislature, passed a number of years ago. We have spoken to our engineer. He feels it is quite likely the total cost will be less than the $439,000. But that's the number we're working with. That's what we have for a number at this point. We don't have, we don't have, we won't, we don't have, and we won't have final estimates on what the cost will be, but we're, we're very confident this, these are maximums. Can you not hear me still? Louder? No, I can just say, you had the microphone off to the side. Okay. Of you can hear yourself very loudly because the speaker's at your head. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you. So, and I would remind everyone, this is something that has been mandated by the state. This is not something that, certainly not something that we're imposing upon ourselves. So, I would, uh, I would open it up to discussion. I don't know if I'll start with the board. I think the board wants to add. I think you did. Cool. And then Brent, would you like to add anything at this point? <laughs> uh, just that I've uh, communicated with uh, Mumble Engineering on multiple occasions, and uh, he has expressed comfort in sharing with me that 
he thinks that there might be alternative solutions based upon another three acre rule site that he is dealing with for another municipality. And um, one, he feels like this current solution that a lot of the costs um, are inflated. Uh, this solution has been submitted to the state of Vermont. And it's been pending for quite some time because for quite some time, the state of Vermont, one of the requirements was that there, an HOA be formed. They've since uh, dropped that requirement, but that's this, this solution is what is currently pending. But again, uh, Tyler Rumley feels like there are alternative stormwater solutions that will be potentially less expensive. Um, so we captured at ARPA funding. There's only seven of those awards throughout the state with approximately 1,000 of these three acre stormwater sites in the state. So uh, I, I think that considering the circumstances and the, the state mandates that we have been faced with, that we're fortunate to be one of the seven that's seizing upon uh, this funding. Um, so a lot of people previously have asked, how much will it be? We will not know that until the state actually accepts the stormwater solution that we submit. But again, uh, Mumley Engineering feels that this, this quote that we received for the current stormwater solution um, would be the highest that uh, the community would have to deal with. Thank you, Brent. Any questions, comments? Come on up to the microphone, identify yourself. Hi, I'm Kate Dream and I'm short. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to thank all of you. I've been very impressed with how you presented this to us, and I think the efforts that you've made to make this fun solution. Um, I've got a few questions. One, is the simpler solution an open pond? And would we have any say about the solutions that are proposed? Yeah, I'll let Brent answer that question. So, Mumley Engineer hasn't provided me with any specific stormwater solutions. Uh, previously, another resident of the community has expressed concern with any open pond solution. So, uh, before anything was submitted to the state, we would definitely confer with the with Jersey Heights community. Uh, but that is not something that I, I've not seen anything but the current solution offered. And uh, Mumley Engineering is currently going through the process of alternatives, evaluating alternatives. Does that answer? Well, so would we be involved in that process? And you, we would consult with all of you to check in with you and you know make sure it's acceptable. Now, there are easements that are currently there. Um, I've researched easements along the roadside, there's, there's infrastructure 15 feet below ground. So um, there, there will be the need, no matter what the solution, to work with that current underground infrastructure, whether it be this solution or another scale. But we will confer with the community, obviously. Can I ask another question? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I just quickly looked through the list of, of property owners now my understanding is that part of this process, this um, this proposal is on property owned by Howard and Osh, is that correct? Does Howard own an impervious surface up there as well? He doesn't own an impervious surface. Um, well, there's a roadway that we are claiming to be responsible for, but he owns property and he has agreed that he would allow stormwater solution to be on that property. Okay. Because I didn't see his name or percentage for his part. Yeah, so those those would just be for properties that have impervious services. Okay. Yeah, because the percentages, when you look at that, you can see the percentages are different. And that's because the amount of impervious surface on those parcels is different as well. Thank you, Kate. Want to the microphone? Problem with this because 
as just identify yourself. Lee Laguerre, Pearson Heights. In 2011, the town accepted the stormwater permit from the state. The town shouldn't have done this because Monash was still developing the property. So why did the town take over the permit when it should have been the development or the developer at the time, not the town? So now I think the town is responsible because they took over the permit and now they want us to pay. Uh, I think that's crazy. Why the town ever got involved to begin with is beyond me. How it still owned, or Monash still owned the development at the time, they were still selling lots and building. So why wasn't the stormwater permit presented to him? But the town went and took it over, so now they, they're backing out. They don't want to pay for it. They want us to pay for it. Was 2011, is that when the town took over the road? 2011. 2011. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to finally find the, the minutes from the select board meeting and it's very clear that the select board took over the roads didn't even mention the sidewalks but uh, took over responsibility for the roads i'm still trying to dig up information in between you know juggling other things but um, i also did also find permit stormwater permit related items where menage corp is still signing documents in 2018. Um, I have not been able to find minutes where it shares why the town took over the permit. Um, my only assumption, and against assumption, is that again there was no HOA and the town was responsible for the roads and the sidewalks. So rather than have a stormwater permit that was out of compliance, somebody may have decided, you know what, we'll just, since there's no HOA, um, we will, the town will deal with it so that our roads and sidewalks we don't have any liability. I don't know, that's just a, an assumption I'm making based upon you know, what I've been able to dig up. But I was curious about why in 2011 that permit may have been, uh, the responsibility of filing may have been done you know, by the town, but Minash was still signing related documents Representative of Mahanash was still signing related documents in 2018. So all of that is not something that I've been able to focus as much time on as dealing with the state and making sure that um, despite the circumstances of this, that I negotiated to extend out the deadline for that ARPA grant so that we could go through all the process to capture those funds and reduce the liability and the costs. I can understand you guys have been doing a great job. Uh, I don't argue with that. But the thing is, I think it's the town's responsibility and not the homeowners there because that permit should have been given straight to the developer and not the town. And the town should have never accepted it. I'm Maria Ward. Um, I have a couple of comments um, on the Article 2, the wording, shall the voters levy a special tax assessment not to exceed $200,000 for the purpose of constructing stormwater improvements to, be to benefit 64 parcels Blah, 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 and it goes on. I find this statement to be incredibly misleading. Um, this does not benefit Jersey Heights in any way, shape, or form. 
Um, our current stormwater system, which was installed as permitted, works just fine. We don't have an issue. Um, as you know, this is being forced upon us by State Act 64 to save various waterways throughout the state. So I went onto the state website <clears throat> to find out which waterway our permit is going to benefit. And that would be Mallets Bay. Mallets Bay is not in Jersey Heights. It's 52 miles away. So we're not getting a benefit from this. I believe for the voters to make an informed decision, they need correct and accurate information, which this is not. I think reading this, the taxpayers are going to think, oh, Jersey Heights needs a new stormwater. They must be failing. They need new stormwater. So that's not the case. Um, I feel like this, um, it should be stated that the improvements are required by State Act 64 to improve various waterways throughout the state. Um, I don't think the taxpayers should be um, misled, and I don't believe that was intentional. Um, I just feel that it is misleading. My second comment is... Can you get closer to the microphone? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. My second comment is, I had been told by various people throughout town that when um, the town took ownership of the Jersey Heights development, that included not only the roads and sidewalks, but also the underground infrastructure. Um, so I wanted to know if I could get, put a little weight to that to find out if that was actually true. So I met with the developer of the subdivision, and he did confirm that yes, that is the case, the underground infrastructure did go with the roads and sidewalks. So I then went to the town clerk's office um, to back up this information. Um, I was helped by uh, Judy and Missy. Um, they were very helpful to me. So I did find the warranty deed dated November 4th, 2007 from the H.A. Menage Corp to the town of Morristown, which describes the transfer of the development, which includes the access strip from Route 100, Jersey Way, Foss Street, and it goes on to be very descriptive about ingress, egress, rights of way, landmarks, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes on to state, the land and premises conveyed herein is subject to the terms and conditions of the following. There is a subdivision permit, one, two, three, four, five land use permits, and the state of Vermont ANR um, Environmental Conservation Authorization to Discharge Permit, which is what we're talking about. The grantee, meaning the town of Morristown, acknowledges that the conditions of these permits run with the land, and it has received the copies of all prior to the execution of the deed. So then I emailed uh, ANR and asked for a history of the permit. Um, and this is the response that I received. Um, the H.A. Minoff Corporation received the permit from ANR August 5th, 1993 to the H.A. Minoff Corporation. Then the permit was amended and replaced um, June 25th, 2003, and it was signed to the Jersey Heights subdivision. Then, the permit was amended again and was issued to the town of Morristown, June 28, 2011, as it should have been, as the permit runs with the land, as it was taken over in 2007. So, if you'll just allow me one last comment. Um, if the town votes this, if the town passes this amendment and makes the Jersey Heights residents pay for what I believe the entire town should be responsible for. Um, you're asking each homeowner of the Jersey Heights residents to take out a roughly $3,000 loan for 20 years at 5%. Would any of you handle your finances like that? Um, so hopefully, if this, if this passes and we are forced to pay, hopefully you have the ability to take a one something else some payment because no one wants to pay 5% for 20 years. 
$100,000 unless they absolutely have to. So those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would comment on your first question in regards to the word benefit. I certainly understand exactly what you're saying. Can it be changed? You make all the sense in the world. I don't believe it can be changed because it's warranted. But I think the word benefit there is, the benefit is that Jersey Heights would be in compliance with the state mandate. That's the benefit. The town would be in compliance? Yes. If the town had done that. Yeah. So this is why we're talking about the town. That's where the word benefit would come from. I do know I read the minutes from that, from 2011, the select board minutes, and that conversation seemed to be all about roads and sidewalks. But I think that's all I can really say about that. I do have a copy of the warranty deed if you want to read it. Yeah. That I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm just not familiar with it. But I'm sure you have something that, you have something you can share with our town manager. I already have it. You already have it. You didn't sign it. You don't sign the deeds. Okay. This is in the deed. Do you want to say that in the microphone? So with the deed, the beneficiary does not sign the deed. Excuse me. So the minutes of the select board meeting clearly illustrate that the town took over the roads. It doesn't even clearly illustrate that they took over the sidewalk. It was the roads. And there was discussion about the condition of the roads. And there was an agreement that was come to by the select board and Menage about a certain number of years guaranteeing the roads and putting seal. That's the only conversation that was had. There was never any conversation about being deeded over the stormwater permit rights. It happens to be included in the deed that was filed in the town. But nobody that was a town official besides the town clerk's office recording the deed, they're not required to review it. Nobody that represented the town signed off on that deed. Thank you, Brenda. Other comments from the audience? Hi, Kristen Fogdahl, Jersey Way. Can you guys hear me back there? I'm trying to keep my mouth very close to the microphone. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. But that, yes. Maria. Maria. But that was, if I understood it correctly, some slightly alarming information just about how the whole thing came about. And I guess I would say that I do still agree that in many ways the most logical thing would have been for the entire town to pay for this project as opposed to creating a special district. That being said, I also realize that we can't have our cake and eat it too because we did not want to form a homeowners association. And this does save us from that. And it also saves people from having their properties in limbo if they want to sell, which I think is one of the biggest benefits. Otherwise, we could have been in limbo for quite a long time. So for whatever it's worth, that's my personal opinion about some of the subjects that have been raised already. However, my biggest question, especially in light of what Maria has been saying and some of what Brian's been saying too, I understand why this language is not in the article. But I want to know, have any protections or agreements been put in place to assure the homeowners in our neighborhood that this special district is not going to be used for future taxation? I know this is a big point of discussion in some of our open meetings where I think people were saying, all right, if we're going to go ahead with it, we want assurances that this is only for the implementation of the original equipment or whatever is required for the solution and not for ongoing maintenance or reinstalling something that's better or new because the old one is broken down 20 years hence. 
I feel like uh, at that point, I would absolutely be expecting the town to make it whatever costs are associated with it, that part of the town taking it over is finding a way to fund those commitments through whatever tax basis we have as a town as a whole and not piecemeal. I would assume in many ways, I would hope that the town is not interested in setting up a precedent where different neighborhoods get taxed for different things. And there were some other circumstances with the timing and the grant and all of that that maybe made this um, approach necessary. And in fact, it doesn't seem like we can change it now because it's been warned. But what I would like is something in more than just, I guess, the minutes, since the minutes after a certain period of time don't really offer a lot of um, illumination, you know, 10 years from now, at least based on the minutes from 10 years ago. So what assurances can we have? Is there something that can be documented so that um, this article is clearly only for the initial installation of the project and not some sort of ongoing thing that 20 years from now, people who live in the neighborhood are still going to be dealing with? Thank you. Mark, do you have any comments? I said the motion that I'm going to use. Sorry, folks. I've, I've been told to use this microphone. Is this on? Go to that end. Sorry. So I've been asked to use this microphone. Um, I don't, do you want to comment on any of that? The, the motion that the select board uh, passed was specific to the, the stormwater solution, whatever it may be. Um, and for a, a finite period of time and uh, that I understand your concern about having to go back 10 years from now to find that specific motion um, I'll take into consideration what other methods we may be able to use to sort of uh, make more record of that but uh, the select board was very specific in their motion about that this is to be used for the stormwater solution and not ongoing maintenance, etc. Thank you. Other comments? Yes, that's probably a good place for us. <laughs> I'm a member of the Jersey Heights community as well, too. Um, I wanted to second with Kristen. I also want to second with Maria that um, the language of just the 64 homeowners for benefit really be incorrectly. The 64 parcel, the benefit to just the 64 homeowners is really incorrect and um, misleading. So it's unfortunate language. Um, my question um, has to do with you talked about there might be putting among the engineering a solution at a lower cost. If that is true and a lower cost solution is possible and the grant money continues to be available and covers it, is this then null and void? What happens if the solution does come in at a lower cost? Yeah, I would say that it may not make it null and void, but it would make it so that there wouldn't be an assessment on those 64 parcels if, in fact, it comes in at the price of the grant. Mm -hmm. So if it should come in at $316,000, there would be no need for 
additional assessments. I'm they don't get it. Other comments? Yeah. I'll try not to hang in George. Okay, well, <laughs> you've hung me before. <laughs> My name is Wallace Reed. Um, I, I believe a couple of clarifications for those that were concerned, because I was at the select board meeting when they made those motions, and the motion to accept the responsibility for ongoing maintenance of the stormwater system after this project done was made in perpetuity to the town. So that means the town of Morristown owns it. And if the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources requires them to build a much larger project down the road, the town. Um, and as far as reading this article, it's very specific that it only goes to the construction of the stormwater. So after the stormwater is done and that bill is paid, this tax assessment district disappears. From my understanding of state law, having been involved with the one for Katie Falls water district. Through the trustee. Once that bill is paid, this district disappears. So they can't come back and say, well, now you're going to have to pay to rebuild the sidewalks. They'd have to do this process all over again for that. Thank you for that, Molly. Other comments? Yeah, yes, please, Don. Thank you. Right over here, Mark. 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 Right the past administrators have made a lot of mistakes that we're going to be paying for down the road. My, my question, and I have not really gotten a good answer for, is the town made a mistake, and it's right for you now we've got to correct that mistake. Why isn't the whole town paying for that instead of making the group uh, Jersey Heights alone pay for it? Why? And especially it's a hundred and something thousand dollars spread out to the whole town. It was the our town to say we should pay for it. Why can't we do that? That's my only question. The whole town pay it for it. Yeah, that's a good question, Tom. It's one that we deliberated quite a bit at our select board meetings. And the select board did, in the end, decide that this would be a the best way moving forward, giving the, the voters of Morristown the option to vote on this was to uh, create a special tax assessment district. Um, I think there was concern about precedent. I think there was concern about what happens when the next mandate comes down from the state. How would our decision affect that? which uh, I, I can't even imagine what that would be. I don't think too many of us imagined years ago that, that we'd be sitting here talking about this, but I think it's probably fair to say something is going to come down the pipe. And I think the concern on the part of the select board, I'm going to speak for myself, but I think the, the, the concern was present. If we take on, if we lay this on the entire town, then do we need to do that for other similar projects going down the road, which could be more costly, which could be more, much more expensive than this one. So I think that was a concern. I don't know if any of the board members want to speak to that. Thank you, Tom. I'm going to just, uh, before the lead comes up again, I'm just going to ask, is there anybody else who hasn't spoken yet that might want to speak? Come on up, Mark. And I guess there's been talk about a lower, a possible lower um, 
price uh, engineering um, uh, plan that was that could be done, but I am confused on how that would get decided. How who decides that there's a which plan is going to work, and how what's that process? And that's kind of a what what's the most that you know about the timeline on that? Because um, I mean, somehow this first plan was made, and I don't know how they decided that this first plan is the one that should should have been presented. Um, so I, you know, what is the procedure that that helps them decide on whether a lower price plan would work? And of course, we all want the lowest price plan that we could have. So um, that's, I guess, it's that is the timeline. Like, right? what's the procedure and the timeline? That's a good question, Mark. So it's my understanding that the state would make that final determination so that when a plan is put in play, proposed, that the state would, would need to accept that, that plan. But again, we, we do have it on the uh, opinion of our engineer that a lower price plan is, is reasonable. We don't know what that is at this point. That plan hasn't been put together yet, and it certainly hasn't been accepted by ANR at this point. So the civil engineer uh, will be evaluating alternative solutions. At the time that uh, this was submitted, it was uh, submitted by watershed consulting engineers. Um, and because there was question about the location and who owned what we now know as Mr. Menashe's land, uh, we couldn't, the town could not get uh, soil samples done. So since those soil samples have come back, and since uh, Mumley Engineering has worked on another three acre rule, uh, he feels that there are potential less expensive solutions, potentially. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up, but uh, that's what he's repeatedly told me. And then as a, as, we, we accepted this grant funds. We also accepted a timeline. And uh, I had a lot of negotiations with the state over this, had legal counsel involved. And the project completion date is August 31st, 2026. And from the time that the select board authorized me as a town manager to sign this, the clock started ticking. Mumley Engineering has already you know, started the process. I've, We've already, as of today, had to file a report, a filing report. You know, we just signed this a couple of weeks ago. It was one of the complaints, one of the things I tried to have changed is like all the reports that were due for this. But uh, August 31st, 2026 is our deadline. And the state will work with us. I'm not saying that they'll extend out that deadline, um, but they will work with us, you know, the points in between. They, they assured me that uh, they're not going to be overly bureaucratic and insisting on specific dates if, they sh if we show that we're moving forward. Uh, one final thing that I, I do want to bring up is you had brought up why would anybody um, pay 5% on X number of dollars. Um, I've talked with uh, Sarah, town clerk, treasurer, and we can, if needed, use a line of credit. So we wouldn't be taking out $120,000, $140,000 all at once. This is again a process that's going to extend out to August 2026. Uh, so with a line of credit, if funds are needed uh, beyond the grant funds, we can draw down just enough to pay the costs. Um, if the town approves the, the third uh, item, which I don't even know that you, you've uh, brought up yet. No, but yet. Uh, other comments? Again, I'm going to just ask any, anybody who hasn't spoken yet, want to speak before Lee comes up? And we'll get, give Laura a chance to talk first. Um, so I uh, have a couple of questions. Um, I I uh, actually looked at Jersey Heights when I first moved here. Um, I did not move, I did not move there. Um, I now live in a development that has an HOA. Having been on both DRB and 
planning, um, I have seen how we require HLAs for any development. So I'm very unclear how Jersey Heights wasn't required to have an HOA. Um, I'm not faulting anybody, but I'm not sure you know how that happened. Um, the in my understanding of the events, having talked with lots of people, is that given the circuit, you know, no one no one saw this coming, and that when because the town is responsible for 35 percent and we have to remember that this is also taking into account driveways and rooftops um, so this is not just the roads in front of your house um, and that my understanding uh, was that because it wasn't an HOA that the select board just they're like we can't let it because we have 34 percent we can't let this go so they took it on not having any idea that it would end up in this mess. I'm curious as to how many years we have paid this. Um, we've been paying 100% as opposed to 34%. So um, where you guys haven't been paying anything for stormwater, which rural developments do, uh, HOAs, we have lots of assessments on HOA, you know, on HOAs. Um, so, you know, it's again, it's a learning process because also the development I'm living in, we're having water problems because there was no zoning regulations on where they put culverts. And so we're now having trouble because the culverts, according to the town, are on private land because there was no permit. So now if you go to do a culvert in your driveway, there's a permit that they're done correctly because of, um, of the roads and for storm water. So I, I just, it's, I think it's a hardly unfortunate situation for all concerned. I'm not, you know, I'm not signing either way. Um, but I just do want to say that these regulations come out of the state and the elections are coming up. <laughs> and so I would say, ask everyone running, did they vote for this? And are, or did they agree to target the, you know, these different developments with these improvements? Thank you, Ron. Again, anybody before we start a second round? Well, let's let, let, leave them. Okay. Come on, please. Can you hear me here? Uh, a couple of things. We don't know um, how long this is no. supposed to be for, <laughs> or, or the payments are supposed to be for. This puts a lien on every property because when you go to sell your property, you've got to tell people, uh, look, uh, I have a lien on the property because uh, I don't know what it is at this point for how long I have to pay, what I have to pay. Um, that's a little weird. I mean, uh, how do you sell your property not knowing any of this information? Secondly, if the if this is on the ballot for the town to vote on, why aren't they giving us some money instead of just Jersey Heights paying for it? Well, I would say on that last point, the town is certainly on the hook for 34%. I, I know that's not all that you're suggesting there, really, but, but the town is paying 34% of the, uh, the burden. George? Thanks, Tom. So I guess I would say two things. Um, the first is I supported this uh, proposal to the Jersey Jersey Heights special tax assessment district. And the simplest way I can say is how I supported that was the 64%, the 66% is Jersey Heights share of the remaining cost is based on rules and driveways. This is private property. It is not public, it's private. 
Um, sorry. First time I need a microphone. Um, and therefore, it makes sense to me that that is not ever to be a burden on the town people. It's, it's each of your private property. And, and then Brent has gone further working with the town only to break down how many square feet, correct terminology, square feet your property actually yields in um, row, in group, and in driver. So, right now, the sheet that um, Judy handed around that Brent has done with Kyle Monkley rolls it to the nearest percent. And you see most of those are at 1%. That seems to make sense. Most people try to be about the same length. Oops, about the same. But it is your private property. So that, that's my first. That again, I'm speaking for me. I'm not speaking for any other member of the board. That was one of the bases for my support of the allocation that we see as in this proposal. The second one, I would just say, Maria, to your calculations, just doing some top of the napkin work, there's about roughly 120000 left. If, if we use the $139,000, roughly, the Brent says the newest cost estimate, the 316000 again, rounding off, that really gets us to 123,000. Let's call it 120,000 so we can do easy math. The allocations on this proposal are 34% and 66%. If we use 30 and 7, that 30% town, 7% home, uh, Jersey Heights, that overstates Jersey Heights' liability and slightly understates the town's liability because it's 34, 66, not 37. That means that the Jersey Heights component would be 7% of the 120,000, it's 84,000. If you are a 1% owner on that sheet, the principal, that's not interest free enough to take that into account, is $840. Now, I don't know, but I don't know that the town has gotten this far, but if we take the loan out for 20 years, and that's not agreed upon either, that's, all this says is that's the maximum we can go up to. I don't know that if somebody wanted to pay that off in 10 years, that we could take advance payment and you wouldn't have an assessment anymore, and therefore you wouldn't get the interest for it, but the interest expense. There may be options to that, not, I'm not sure that we can do that or not, but it wouldn't be one way either. Frank right? might say, this is not worth doing 20 years, and the board might say, we don't need to stretch 20 years. For 84,000, and frankly, the town under that act would be 36,000. I'm not sure I would support a 30 year loan for 36,000 dollars for the town. And if I'm not going to support it for the town, I wouldn't support it for Jersey Heights season. It, it doesn't make any sense to stretch out that kind of loan for 20 years. Then the interest is ridiculous. So those are perfect numbers, Maria, but I, the 3,000, I'm sure you, you saw it one after you heard all the presentations. And I don't doubt, don't doubt that you saw that 3,000 in some place in one of the conversations. Yeah. But if we look at what we're talking about right now, the principal, I, I hear you, I'm not trying to change your, your, your view of it. I get it. And that's okay. We're going to have to disagree to disagree. They can do that for us. I know. We already have. And still play it all. I know. We can. We can. But I don't, I don't think it's going to end up being $3,000 a month. There's been more work done than when we had the original two conversations. Brent has done with Tyler Lumley. A lot of work in getting it site by site. And for that reason, I continue to support this this article personally. I voted for it and I will I will vote for it. Um, it's not because I don't want to bear the thirty six thousand or the, the eighty four thousand. I do as Don said, things that sets a significant precedent. There's over a hundred thousand parcels in the state have been cited as possible three acre stormwater systems. Now many of those are parking lots, go to South Road and look out the parking lots. That thank you. That's very commercial and that's their problem. How many of those are active developments like we're talking about here? I don't have that number. The biggest the biggest sites are all commercial or, or industrial. But when I look at those numbers, and when I do think of the precedent, and when I think of the division between public property and private property, my sense is taxes are supposed to be spent on public property. 
than not supposed to be spent on private property. And I guess that's all I want to pass up. Thank you. Thank you, George. Other comments? Hi, Kristen Fogg, Old Jersey Way. Um, at the risk of re-adjudicating this whole thing, I just want to respond <clears throat> to what you're saying and to a little bit of what Laura was saying, only because I feel like we as homeowners in Jersey Way need to go on record one more time saying that <clears throat> I, I can't speak for every single one of the 64 people, but Pretty much everybody I know bought a house there thinking that they were buying a house in a regular neighborhood of the town. There are plenty of private homeowners whose stormwater is dealt with just as a matter of course through town taxes. And we believed, I can speak for my husband and myself, that house was built there thinking that we were a regular neighborhood of town. And, um, and that's, I think, pretty much the motivation for all of us saying we don't want to retroactively, 20, 25, 30 years after the fact, create a homeowners association when we specifically chose to buy somewhere where there was no homeowners association. Now, I don't know the legal responsibilities between a town and a developer, but the reason, Laura, that there is no HOA is that the developer did not cross the T's and dot the I's if the agreement was that there was going to be one. And the town was kind of asleep at the wheel as well. So I just want to go on record saying that you are uh, dealing with a lot of citizens of this town who are not trying to like pull a fast one and get out of the taxes. What we want is to be setting up a precedent where we are a neighborhood just like any other neighborhood in this town. And our taxes go to fund the municipal services that we need, including stormwater, dealing with stormwater. Um, so I, I think there's a flaw in your, in your logic around that issue. Thank you. Anybody else? One more time. <laughs> Thank you, Maria Moore, Jersey Way. Um, so I just want to mention you you had spoke earlier, Don, about setting a precedent. So what this makes me think of is if we were to play pretend for just a minute, because I don't think any of us saw this coming and nothing surprises me anymore. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So Let's pretend that the state of Vermont at some point in time decides that neighborhoods of a certain size will be required to have, uh, let's say, solar powered exterior lighting. And that has to be paid for. So if we set a precedent and we separate the Jersey Heights neighborhood from the rest of the town for this stormwater issue that the state is making us do, would we then say a couple, whatever years down the road, we have the state mandate saying neighboring hoods have to have a solar powered exterior lighting, are we going to separate, say, Fairwood Parkway, Pinewood Estates, uh, well, any neighborhood, Morristown is all subdivision, that's how we all started. So are we, this would bring a precedent, in my opinion, it would start a precedent of separating neighborhoods for state mandated bureaucracy. Um, because this is what's here now, and we don't know what's coming down the road. So if we're willing to do this for this project for Jersey Heights, are we willing to do this for other projects for other neighborhoods? Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Thank you, Lynn. 
I just wanted to respond to what you were saying that this is private land. My stormwater will never run into this project. My stormwater will never run into this project. So when you say it's private land, to me it's a public, it's a public solution to a problem I don't have. So to say it's private land and we should be, you know, contributing to this, that's my problem. My water will never go into this project, whatever the, the form of the project is. And then my question is, is there any mechanism to um, contest these percentages? My neighbor, Albert Bedell, has never been to any of these meetings. He's an older man. He's really not aware of this. His assessment is twice mine, but I don't feel his house is twice my size or as impervious to from um, you know, the area is twice mine. So does he have a right to appeal this? Yeah, Kate, that's your latter question. It's a great question. And in fact, uh, I know Brent and I were in a conversation regarding this earlier this week, and I think it's I think it's safe to say that it is appealable. Yeah, I'd say almost anything is appealable. So, so yes, I would say I would say. Your, the number that's on there is available. These are rounded numbers as well, so I don't know if we would end up using exact numbers with more decimal places, but um, it is, it's a great question. I think the sheet was put together just so you would have some idea of what, what the numbers might look like. Other comments? So there's yeah, is there anything online? No. Okay. If there's no other comments, then I'm going to move on to number three on the agenda under new business, which is not mutually exclusive from what we've been talking about. So number three, Brent alluded to this earlier. Well, Article 2 has to do with the special tax assessment, creating a special tax assessment. Article 3 has to do with financing it, how that would be done. So Article 3 states, shall the voters of the town of Morristown authorize borrowing amount not to exceed $200,000 to be financed over a period not to exceed 20 years to pay for state required stormwater infrastructure improvements in the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District. So, as you can see from the flow chart there, if Article 3 does pass, we would be able to use grant funds and obtain long-term financing to amortize the cost for the town and the 64 parcel owners. Those would be the parcel owners in Jersey Heights. If it fails, um, the town can use grant funds and pay any additional expenses immediately. So if the voters do not authorize us to borrow this money, we obviously cannot borrow this money. So this is perhaps a little bit clearer to understand. I'll hazard to say that, but um, we do need to make these improvements. They are state mandated improvements. And we need to, or we need to plan for the event that we need to make these improvements, and we clearly need to find the funds somewhere, and that is the essence of Article Three. So I would uh, first open it up to the board. Any comments? I would open it up to the audience then. If you come forward. from Jersey Heights. Um, words matter. And in Article 2, you're asking to establish the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District. In Article 3, you're asking the voters if the town should borrow money due to the state requirement for a special assessment district that does not yet exist because it hasn't been <laughs> voted upon. So the wording of this article 
has a perception already built into it. So I'm uncomfortable with the wording of the article. My guess is if we had our legal advice with us in the room tonight that they might say that that's what needed to be written if in fact Article 2 passed. And on the last page of your packet you can see some various options depending upon which article might pass, which article might fail. But it's a, it's a great question, uh, Leah. These, are, these two articles are intertwined with each other and one might pass and one might fail. They could both pass, they could both fail. Obviously, there's three options there. Oh, there's four options, depending upon which one passes and which one fails. But I would guess that, that was written the way it was on the, um, on the uh, chance that Article 2 does pass. But obviously, if Article 2 doesn't pass, the Special Tax District, Assessment District doesn't exist. And then the town is, is on the hook. Other comments? Uh, Brent, anything to add to We, uh, we had uh, attorneys assisting with the language and staff had that same question. Um, we were advised by legal counsel that that's the way it needed to be worded. Um, and I've, I've worked my whole career with attorneys, complicated bonds, finance documents. I really struggled with the language uh, for these, for these, and so uh, it's partially because you know I've not been involved as a town manager. Um, Sarah was amazing, um, and for uh, Sarah a lot. But ultimately, we relied on legal counsel. To develop the specific language, but we had the same exact discussion about that specific language. Thank you, Brent. Other comments? So I'm not. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Kate Greenman. I'm not clear about this. So if it's if the tax assessment district is voted down, what grant money? Remains. Isn't the grant money hinged on the public partner, public, the private public partnership? So if we don't have a tax assessment district, is there still grant money available? It's my understanding that, the, and by grant money, you mean the $316,000 coming from the state? I don't, I, I'm just looking at right. this, so I don't know what grant money is. So that money would still be available, but we would. If the town tells us that we can't borrow money, we can't borrow money, so we would immediately have to come up with the funds to cover the cost. But is it, is it grant? You're good. So all along, this is Kate Greenman again. So all along, I've been thinking that the grant money is only available if we have a tax assessment district. So, are you saying that if there's not a tax assessment district, there's still grant money available? The latter, yes. So if we don't have a special tax assessment district, we're still going to get the grant money. The difference is the entire town is going to pay for this right away. And we're going to have to come up with the money right away. We're going to have to find the money in the budget to pay for this. Because we've been told we can't borrow the money. So we can't amortize it over however many years, so we're going to have to come up with the money immediately. But right from the beginning, in the early meetings, we asked, you had laid out, you know, fire district, had a concession district, but if there wasn't some sort of special thing to make a public-private partnership, the grant money would go away. But you're saying that's not the case. Both of those is not the case. So. When there was five options presented in the very beginning. And I was reading over my notes today and reminding me of this. So one of those five options was for the town to do nothing and just take 100% of it and be done with it. So we didn't need to do an HOA, we didn't need to do a fire district, we didn't need to do a special tax assessment district. But those were options that clearly huh. other towns had, had thought about. Um, but 
It wasn't. It wasn't absolutely necessary. So the state originally was requiring an HOA. They they flexed. They, they pivoted from that. They're not requiring an HOA anymore. And I've been in consultation with the state, not consultation, but in communication with the state, because uh, we wanted to make sure, you know, what the ramifications were if there wasn't a special tax assessment district, what this partnership needed to be. Essentially, the state will accept that partnership via easements and that type of working with the town of Morristown. So originally, the state was holding the permit still, you know, pending. And one of the requirements was there needs to be an HOA. I made it very clear to the state that there's not going to be an HOA. And they know that they couldn't enforce it. We knew that we couldn't enforce it. Um, so the state has changed some of the requirements that they were originally, originally had for this ARPA funding. So there's been movement by the state on this. Um, when that when that stormwater permit was originally filed, one of the reasons stated that they would not approve it was because there was no HOA. But um, I have confirmed that the grant funds are not contingent upon a special tax assessment district. The partnership is the community working with the town, working on easements that might be needed, etc., to fulfill that partnership. And just so you know, these are my notes from June 27th. Yeah, there was five options an HOA, a fire district, special assessment district, which is what we're talking about tonight. Do nothing. Or stormwater utility. So those were those were our findings. Scalia, there's a um, I'm not confused. So we we're gonna get you know, sixteen thousand dollars in grant money to pursue this stormwater project. If the proposed solution comes in at or below three hundred and sixteen thousand dollars, the grant money. Will this tax district still exist? And would we still have to pay the breakout? You're shaking your head no. And that's it's the answer no. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, with a caveat. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Or the caveat. I I can share this with people, but if you if you went through the contract, there's specific funding. Specific milestones that need to be met. So, um, you know, if we spent, and I, I, I don't have this in front of me, I haven't analyzed this thoroughly, but let's say we spent $100,000 on legal, that might not qualify. So, we would be liable for something that's outside a range, a possible range. And I'm just using that as an example, that's not something specific I am citing. But that, that's a possible caveat. But we have the $316,000. If we can come in at that, um, there will be a special tax assessment district that will dissipate because the, when the project is done in August 2006, this special tax assessment district, as Wally so eloquently described, much better than I could, could it's, this special tax assessment district is only for this stormwater solution. That's it. So in August 2026, if we haven't needed to use any funds beyond the grant funds, and the project is complete, tax assessment, tax assessment district is dissolved. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. Other comments? In the room or online? Sorry, online. Just one more thing. Uh, 
But then these grant funds and obtain the long term financing to amortize the cost for the town of the 64 parcel owners. If Article 2 fails, the town of Morristown is responsible for 100% of the cost. And if Article 3 fails, then we would use the grant funds and the town pays any additional expenses immediately. So again, that's, I think we've talked pretty well through all that at this point, but that is a summary of, of the discussion. Comments from the board? <laughs> Comments from the audience? Comments online? I would move on then to Part four, community comments. Scene one. As she hosts the education meetings and the informational meetings, um, are you going to make it clear that you have your $16,000 in grant money? That if the town is 100% responsible, you're, you have that money to use? Is that part of the information that's going to be out there? I, I would certainly think so, yes. Yeah. I remember those early discussions about $316,000 was um, when we as a town needed to sign off on that stormwater permit, you'll remember back in the summer, in order to uh, get the 316,000, I think a lot of what we're talking about tonight is the is the money that brings us up to the 430 now. That's just new information that it's not tied into the public private partnership. Okay. Yeah. Other comments. Okay, I would entertain the motion. I have a motion to adjourn by George. And I have a second by Laura. Any discussion by the board? All those in favor of adjournment? Aye, aye. Aye. That would be unanimous.